Hi there guys, it's Les from Hypnotherapy Unleashed. Thanks ever so much for watching this video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the benefits of depression anxiety. Now, I say this with a little bit of tongue in cheek because from someone who used to suffer from depression and anxiety myself and has worked with hundreds of people overcome their own depression and anxiety, I know that when you're going through that phase, it doesn't seem like there's any benefits at all. In fact, it might even almost feel offensive to think there could be benefits of depression and anxiety. But what the gift of, well, I suppose evolutionary biology has shown us is that you know, we've been humans for around about 200,000 years. It's important to remember that every single cell in your body right now, every single neuron in your brain has been wired for that sense of survival. And so whenever we're getting this, a particular feeling or some sort of feedback that our body's given us and telling us about an emotional, sorry, about an emotion, normally there's a very particular reason that's there. And so when we think of depression, I remember thinking at the time I could barely get out of bed some days. But I remember very distinctly thinking, why on earth is the human body or the human brain capable of doing this? And it was only when I started to study things like evolutionary biology, like anthropology, do you realize that there's a very particular feedback loop that your body gives you when you're in some sort of danger? And so depression, for example, if we were to go back 14,000 years ago and the caveman or the cavewoman would go outside and there'd be snow or ice or danger around, but what do you think they'd do? It wouldn't be safe to go out and adventure sort of in those really dangerous positions. So what they would do is they'd go back into the cave, they'd pull the rug over their head and they wouldn't interact with anyone until it was safe to go out, until it was safe and the environment had changed. And so in that way, our body starts to go into hibernation mode and our metabolism, me metabolism, metabolism starts to slow down. And that's when our energy starts to become really conserved. And so when you speak to people who've been in a state of depression for so long, there's almost like a correlation with how high and low their energy is as well. Because even though they're technically in a safe environment where they're not gonna be hunted down by saber-toothed tigers, there's still a sense that there's something dangerous in the environment um, that's going to be out there waiting for them. And so there's a very particular part of the brain that will start to send these stress signals that will force us into a hibernation state. So what about the benefits of anxiety then? Well, again, if we were going through the jungle back in those days, with all the different dangers and predators around, it would be wise to be anxious. It would be wise to be on red alert and look you know, through the lens of what could be the worst thing that could happen to me. And it'd be really wise to repeat those things over and over again because that health and safety officer in our brain that essentially is the only reason we're alive today is very wise for that health and safety officer to think of things in negative ways. And so I remember when I was younger, me and my sister went to the window because there was this postman. And this postman was so keen to deliver this, I, I don't think it was a letter, I think it was some sort of package to the neighbours next door. Now I remember distinctly because it was a Saturday morning and I remember that the neighbours were definitely home. And so what happened is the postman started to try and put the package to the door and realised, yeah, it was a package, the package was you know, way too big to be able to go through um, the, the letterbox. Um, and so the postman knocked on the door and there was just no answer. And so he rang the bell and still no answer. Now, my sister Charlie and I just knew that these couple were probably in bed on a Saturday morning and didn't want to be disturbed. But then the postman started to go to the window and started to knock there. And we thought, okay, this, this postman's getting a little bit keen now. So then he started to go around to the gate and he started to look over and he could see that you know, there was no one there. So then he started to leave and we thought, finally, the postman's given up. You know, <laughs> there's other people that probably needed the letters that day. But instead of just carrying on for the rest of their route, he went down to the ground and he picked up some pebbles off the curb and he started throwing them at the top window. Now, me and my sister couldn't believe this because this was probably the most eager postman her and I had ever seen in our lives. But it reminded me of something that the body actually does something similar. That clearly that postman just wanted to deliver a message and when the people who were home just weren't listening to him, he found more extravagant ways to try and get the message to them. Now, it's only looking back on that today where I think, what do you think it would have been like for the couple in the bedroom who were probably just having a really, really good time Saturday morning, perhaps making love, and suddenly there was someone at the door? With that moment, they probably thought, well, it's just a nuisance, so let's ignore him. And the bell goes, and they think, okay, there's someone who clearly wants to speak to us, but clearly we want to spend time together, and that's our priority. But what do you think happened when they started to sort of have gravel being thrown out their window, 
Can you imagine their sense of fear would have just slowly but surely escalated? Now, what's really interesting is, actually, if, you know, they um, answered the door when they first got the knock, that level of fear of why is there someone that eager to try and get into a house, that never would have been there. They would have had to have just gone through one moment of discomfort to open the door and get the message and close the door again. They could have carried on with their Saturday morning. But the truth is that the body and the brain are just like that eager postman. That if there's something wrong, it'll try and find a way to get that message to us. And if we ignore it, it finds a more extravagant way of trying to get that message to us. And it's just so easy in this day and age to try and avoid and distract ourselves from some kind of suffering, from some kind of pain or even discomfort. You know, really, if you look around us, we are living in the most abundant age of human history. And it's phenomenal. And so whenever there's a slight bit of discomfort that can slowly come up in our lives, the natural thing to do is to push it away. But the whole point is that the only reason that feeling came up in the first place is because our body needed to be able to tell us something and we ignored it. So in that way, the body tries to find another reason to try and tell us. And this isn't just from emotional perspectives, it's from physical ones as well. Yeah, how many times do you know um, someone who had a really, really bad pain in their knee? I, this happened to myself a couple of years ago where suddenly I had this pain in my knee that was occurring. So quite naturally, I took some medication to stop the pain. But it didn't stop the pain. The pain was still there. It's just that the signal stopped being able to reach my brain to be able to acknowledge that there was pain in my knee. But the whole reason there was pain in my knee to begin with was because I'd been walking incorrectly. And so what do you think happened? As I took this pain medication um, and kept continuing to walk on my leg the way that I shouldn't be, I started to feel the pain again. And so I'd have to take more pain medication. And this just continued until one day I just found I couldn't walk properly because my body clearly had to send me the message of saying, listen, we've got a problem with our leg and you're not listening. So we're going to have to blow your leg out for you to be able to acknowledge that you can't keep trying to shut the signal down. Now, I would suggest that we're the exact same way in the way that we deal with our emotions. But just like the couple who could have just ended that discomfort by opening the door and allowing that postman to continue delivering messages elsewhere, you know, it's gone to the point where for many of us, we've tried to ignore that postman trying to give us the message. And one of the best things I could ever say to someone is if you just open the door straight away and receive the message, you will go through probably two minutes of severe discomfort for a lifetime of freedom. So I'd love to hear your comments below. And what, are they, what is it that you think you've been pushing back? What message do you think the postman has been trying to give you over the last day, week, month, two months? That maybe you think, I think it's time to answer that door. Write down below and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Thanks ever so much for watching as always. Cheers. Bye.